Well, welcome back to my shop again. What I'm going to be doing is making this turning. And I'm going to try and keep the video as short as I can. Because it's quite an involved turning. I made a video just on making a feature ring. So it's the feature ring I made in the previous video that I'm using. So if you watch the video on the feature ring, you'll know how I made it. I'm using a floating bottom. And I also got a video on my channel on how to make the floating bottom. So I won't spend too much time there. The feature ring is 12 segments per ring. And most of the rest of the rings are 24. I like 24 segments a lot better than I do 12. I think they look better and they're easier to turn. The turning's made from maple, yellow heart, Peruvian walnut, and purple heart. And it's uh, inspired from a squash pot type clay turnings that the Ansazi people did. Now what I'm going to really want to show today is this ring right here. This ring with the pointed pieces. Collar trim or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Let's see if I can here, probably see it better this way. This ring right here is the one I really want to show how I build today. Everything else, like I said, how I glue up rings. I got a video just on making the basic segment rings. How I glue the rings on the lathe. This piece is made in two parts, the bottom half and the top half. And I'll show a little bit on how I match them together. Now I got a video just on on that, on how to match the top and the bottom together, how I do it. So, like I said, I'm going to try and keep the video a little short. I don't show much turning because everybody has their own favorite turning tools and they like to use them and what they consider safe and what they like to use is the correct tool to use. What I use for turning most of the time is what's called an Olin tool. It's just basically a piece of HSS steel that's made for metalworking lays, put into a piece of steel shaft with a handle on it. I will show a short clip of me using a, a uh, tool. And uh, you can't see me turning good because the camera angles, I can't get a good angle in here because of the small shop. But I'll just include that short little clip where you see chips just flying off. And I'll show you the tool that I'm actually using at the time. And it's this tool right here, which is an Olin tool. Like I said, it's just a piece of HSS bit that's used on uh, metalworking lathes put into a shaft. So I'm going to be using this in a real short clip there that I got. So uh, I think we better just get started uh, with the video. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep it a little short. So what I think I'm going to do is make a turning similar to a squash pot. And I got a real rough drawing here, of course just half of it. It's about this big. Of course it'll be, be double that width. I'm going to make it out of maple mostly. I'm going to use purple heart on the bottom and the top. I'm going to put trim rings in it. I'm going to have a floating bottom on it. And I'm going to start with the bottom, of course. And I'm going to make it in two pieces. I'll make the top half and I'll make the bottom half and put them together. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is make the bottom ring, which is going to be 
a seven inch ring out of Purple Heart. I'm going to use 24 segments. This is a 12 segment ring and 24 segments is double that so the joints will line up correctly. I like 24 segments because it's closer to a circle and because there's less grain change when you turn it. So I'm going to start off by making a segmented ring of purple heart. Then I'm going to split it and make a floating bottom. Now I did a whole video on how to make a floating bottom so I won't really get in too much detail on that. I got segments cut for 7 inch purple heart ring. I got it dry clamped so I can check off make sure all the joints are tight. Hold it up to light, make sure they're all tight. I'm getting ready to go ahead and glue it up. Now I made a separate video on my channel on how to make the basic segment ring three different ways. I also made a video on how to use this clamp I'm using, something I come up with. It's a whole lot easier than using band clamps. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue this ring up. Okay, I'm going to put a ring of glue around here right where the ring's going to sit. Turn it upside down on this brown paper. And move it around a little bit. Get the glue spread out some. Okay, the paper glued on. It's on the spindle. I'm going to put a little glue on this ring. I'm going to put it in the tailstock and just bring it up and glue it on. Rotate it a little bit, smear the glue around some. Tighten her down, let her sit a while. It's dry now, so I'm going to turn this surface flat and sand it smooth so I can get a good glue surface on it I'll need later. I'm going to turn the inside round. Of course, I can't go all the way down because of the face, but it'll go down as far as I can. And the same thing with the outside. Then I'm going to part off a piece. I'm going to leave more than I actually part off. And I'm going to make a floating bottom in it. I'll use this to cut the piece I part off to cover it with. Now, I'm going to part off a thin ring. I'm going to leave a lot more on it than what I part off. And I'm going to use the ring to hold the floating bottom later. Now I gotta put a groove in here to hold the floating bottom. About a quarter of an inch deep, maybe three sixteenths wide. I'm gonna go ahead and groove it out. Got the groove cut in it, now I gotta make sure it's perfectly flat. And it's not. So I'm gonna have to flatten it up. Now it's flat. So now I've got to turn the bottom to put in here and leave a little gap around all the way around. I've got the material now hot melt glue mounted to a small face plate. I've got it marked to the diameter I want it turned. I'm just going to turn away the waste, smooth up the edges. It's called a floating bottom, but it ain't truly full floating. There's two spots of glue on the ends of the grain. The grain's run in this direction here. And so there's going to be two spots of glue. I'm going to put shellac on it now. It's been sanded. All except for these two spots that I got taped off. And I'll put glue on them. I don't want any shellac under the glue. I've got two little spots of glue on it. It's going to glue it up. But it leaves it free in this direction here, which of course the way the wood moves. 
So these spots are going to be glued in. I'm going to put it in the tailstock and bring it up and clamp it in. Make sure it's got clearance all the way around. Yes, it's got clearance all the way around. I'll just clamp it in and leave it till it dries. It's been glued a while. Now I've got to turn this down flush with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn her down. Okay, it's been flattened and smooth, sanded. Now I've got to put shellac on this piece and I've got to put a light coat of glue on this piece then I got to glue the piece I parted off back up on it so I'm going to take it off the lathe the shellac and put the glue on then I'll put it back on the spindle I've got the piece I parted off in the cold jaws I'm just going to bring it up and put them together now I've got the inside shellac I'm going to put a very Light coat of glue around the edge. Now, I gotta mount it back on the spindle and bring the other piece up to it got them put together now we'll just let them dry for a while spread it around a little there we go just going to let that dry got the uh, floating bottom ready now I'm going to put in next I'm going to put in a ring of maple before I put the trim rings in and because of the angle it's going to have to be nine inches in diameter and because again because of the angle it's going to have to be at least an inch and a quarter wide so I've got a piece I've already ripped it's a little over an inch and a quarter I'm going to make a nine inch ring out of 24 segments put on a, a nine inch ring 24 segments is going to be 1.1848 I've got the segments cut got it dry clamp check the joints I'm just going to Glue it up and flatten it like I do in all my videos. Just glue it up and put it on a cold jaws, turn it flat, sand it flat, and then I'll be ready to glue it on. Ring's been turned and sanded flat, and I'm just going to glue it on to floating bottom like I always do. Okay, tighten her down a little bit more. Let her set. And we have I've got that ring gluing on right now. After the maple ring, I'm going to put three little trim rings on. And their total height will probably be half an inch. So look, measuring on the chart here, it's going to have to be a 10 inch diameter ring. What I'm going to do is make a Peruvian walnut ring, glue it on, and I'm going to part it off. I'm going to put a thin yellow heart ring on, then I'm going to put the other half of the Peruvian walnut ring back on. Of course, I'll turn them down thin, real thin. So, first thing I'm going to have to do is make a Peruvian walnut ring. 
I've got this sanded, turned and sanded flat. I started turning the inside, and I do this as I work my way out. It's a lot easier than waiting until all the rings are on and then try to get in and turn it. Now I've got the first of the trim rings ready to be glued on. It's actually going to be two of the trim rings. I'm going to glue it on, then I'm going to part it and make two rings out of it. I got the Peruvian walnut piece on here now. I've got a glue surface turned and sanded on this side. What I'm going to do is part it. I'm going to make two thin trim rings out of it. So I'm going to part it off, then I'll turn the piece that's left down to about 0.1 inch. I'll put a yellow heart piece on it and turn it down about 0.2 inch. And then I'll put this piece that I parted off back on it. And make the top trim ring out of it. Nice thing about trim rings, you can make them any size you want. You can make them any number you want. So it's all up to you what you think looks good. But I'm using Peruvian walnut, yellow heart, and Peruvian walnut. And I'm going to make two rings out of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and part it off. Peruvian walnut piece that's left has been turned down and flattened, smooth. My yellow heart ring has been turned flat and smooth. I'm going to glue the yellow heart on now. And the way I normally do. Then after the yellow heart's glued on, I'm going to thin it down, flatten the other side, and then glue the other half of the Peruvian walnut back up on it. I got the trim rings on now. I started turning the bottom a little bit, not much. Still got to turn it some more for the inside bottom. Now I got Peruvian walnut, yellow heart, and Peruvian walnut. Now trim rings, of course, you want contrasting colors, something that will stand out. But how many you use, what the widths are, that's strictly up to you, what you feel looks good. I'd normally try and use the same woods I use in a pattern ring, or at least some of the same woods. So if you like five trim rings, seven trim rings, that's fine. Thin ones, thick ones, thin ones on the outside, thick in the middle, thin in the middle, thick on, whatever you like. So there's really no, no rules that I know about on trim rings, other than just make them look nice. I've got all the maple rings on. I'm ready to put trim rings on now before I put on the feature ring. So there'll be a set of trim rings right under the feature ring. Now because I used purple heart spacers in the feature ring, I want a thin purple heart right above and below the feature ring. So what I'm going to do, I got three rings made, is put on a Peruvian walnut ring, then I'm going to put on a yellow heart ring over the Peruvian walnut, and then I'll put on a very thin purple heart ring right below the feature ring. Now these rings are normal thickness. Making a thin ring is really impractical. So what I do, I'll make the thick rings and I'll part each one in half and use the other half on the top of the feature ring. So first thing I got to do is just glue on the feature rings one at a time. Glue the first one on. After I glue the first one on, I'll get a good sanding surface on the piece I'm going to part off. Then I'll part it off. I'll cut it down to the thickness I want. And then put on another good sanding surface and glue the second ring on. So I'm going to go ahead and get started gluing on the trim rings. I got the thr trim rings on now and turned down and flattened. I've got the other three halves saved to use on the top. 
And I'm ready now to glue on the feature ring. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue the feature ring on it now. I'm starting to get some vibration, so I'm going to turn the spot here on the outside, put the steady rest on it, and see if I can get rid of some of the vibration anyway. Give it a try. Wheels on it now, maybe that'll help some, and I can go ahead and finish the inside up to here. And we'll give it a try. I've got the purple heart ring on now, trim ring. I've still got to put the yellow heart and the Peruvian walnut ring on, but I'm going to put them on the top. So this is as far as I'm going with the bottom. And I've got it sanded and finished put on the inside. I'm going to start turning the outside. I'm going to leave it thick right where it joins the top. I'll turn that down later after the join. But I'm going to go ahead and start turning the, the outside of this. I'm going to use the yellow heart trim ring to match the top and the bottom. After I get the outside turned, I'll put the yellow trim ring on and attach it with hot melt glue along the outside. Then turn the inside to match this. After I do that, then I'll turn the outside to match this ring. Again, leaving it a little thick. That way, when I put the top on, if I match the outside, the inside will automatically match. So I decided to match up the yellow heart before I turn the outside. I have to take the wheels off, turn the outside. So I got the yellow heart up against here. I'm going to use hot melt glue around the outside of this joint. Then I can turn the inside to match the inside of the other rings so they'll match perfectly. But first I'm just going to put hot melt glue all the way around this seam. The yellow heart attached here with hot melt glue around the edge. I'm going to turn the inside just to match the bottom. Just so they just match. I've got the insides matched now. Perfectly matched here. Now I'm going to bring up the coal jaws and hold it from the inside so that I can turn off the hot melt glue and just match these rings up. Again, leaving them plenty thick so I can turn them down later after I glue them together. I've got this piece matched inside and outside with this purple heart ring. So after I glue this on the top piece, all I have to do is match up the outside and the inside will automatically match. So I'm going to put this aside. Now I'm going to take the wheels off. I'm going to bring the coal jaws up to hold it and finish turning the outside. Now I'll just use the coal jaws to turn it between centers. Again, right where they join, I'm going to leave it thick so I can turn it more later after I glue them together. I got the outside shape, all except for the very top of it, the very bottom. I'm going to leave it and finish it. When I put the top piece on glue it, I'll finish shaping here. I'll shape some more here. And I'll finish the bottom after I take it off the face plate. Ready to start on the top now. I'm going to start right at the top and build down towards the center. I'm going to uh, mount it on a face plate with paper just like the bottom. I'm going to start with the very top ring which is going to be purple heart and I'm going to make it six and a half inches. It's going to be 24 segments like a rest so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the ring. I've got the top ring 
Purple Heart prepared, smooth. I'm going to put it in tailstock on the live center and mount it on a piece of brown paper on the face plate, same as I did the bottom. The top ring has been turned and sanded flat. Now, before I put the trim rings on the top, I need to separate it with a thin ring of maple, which is what I got here, ready to be glued on. So I'm going to just put on this thin ring of maple. Put some more and get the glue thinned out. When it starts dragging good, then position it. Right there. This ring's set now for over 15 minutes. Time to start turning this edge flat, smooth, and I'm going to start turning the inside some now. I turned it some inside, got this flat and smooth. Time to glue on the first trim ring. Of course, this ring's going to get parted, and I'm going to use it again on the other other side of the yellow heart ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this one on. After I get it glued on, then I'll smooth up one side and then part it. Now it's time to make this ring right here. That's the ring that's going to have the patterns in it. In order to make it, it's going to be 12 segments. I cut some blocks. Extra large because I'm going to route V-groove in them and I expect to have some tear out. So I left them large enough to count for that. Cut it away. So first thing I'm going to do is route a 90 degree V in the middle of each one. I cut 12 maple blocks three by three for this and each maple block I routed a 90 degree V groove in it using a 90 degree router bit I cut some very thin strips of Peruvian walnut good contrasting wood I'm using Peruvian walnut in this project these are about 0.1 inch Then I cut yellow heart pieces at 90 degrees to fit in. And I'll show you in just a second here how I cut the yellow heart. Cut the yellow heart. I took a stick. It's three inches. I set my fence at 45 degrees. Cut off one piece. Then I flip it and cut the next piece off. I'm going to go ahead and cut one off. Now I've got a piece with the grain running this direction and a 90 degree here. Now I'm going to take it over to the sander and clean up both sides. Yeah, I got the piece of yellow heart cut. I'm going to clean it up on the disc sander. Okay, I got a good clean surfaces for gluing now. I got them cut into strips now, into three inch long pieces. What I'm going to do is first Glue one piece in all the way to the bottom, just like that. And I'm going to glue the second piece in so that it goes down and butts up against the first piece. They got to be nice and tight in the bottom. Then I'm going to glue in the yellow heart over the top. And everything's got to be nice and tight in here, all the way, both ends. 
I'm going to glue them in just like that. I've got, <clears throat> I've got them all glued up now. Trouble is now, they've all got to be flattened. So I'm going to cut them off and then sand them down. And you notice that they're all tight in the center. I made that mistake the first time I did. I'm not getting them tight enough in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut them off a little bit and then sand them down. They've all been smoothed and cleaned up now. And I'm ready to cut them into segments. But I have a problem. I made an error. I thought I had them perfectly centered, but they're not. They're sitting to one side. Which means when I cut them into segments, I'm going to have to cut more off the long side than the other one, which means segments are going to be smaller than what I planned, which of course then means the diameter of the ring will be smaller, which ain't going to work. But I can fix that. What I'll do is just cut some more maple and put some spacers between it with maple and it'll work out fine. So if you ever have a ring that's actually too small, just cut some spacers, the same material, and put in it, and it'll take it out. Nobody will ever know the difference. They'll think it's planned that way. So that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to cut these in the segments. I'm going to cut a 15-degree angle on each side. But this has got to end up centered on the segment. And I've got to make sure everything's right before I glue it up. All the joints are tight. It's got to be flat. It's got to come out flat. So I think I'm ready to glue it up now. It's got to be absolutely flat. I'll tighten it down. And then crank it down tight. One more crank. Yeah. Make sure it's flat. Well, this ring's finally ready to be put on now. I'm going to put some glue on it and just put it up on there. Awful heavy ring to be putting on that small little spot ring here. Line up some joints. See. Right there. Crank her down a little bit. I think I'm going to let this one sit for more than 15 minutes. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. Glue's dried on this. The ring's on here. It's a pretty big ring. So what I'm going to do is turn the inside and turn it out all about this far. Not far at all. And when after I do that, I'm going to put my cone on the tailstock and bring it up and turn it between centers for the rest of it. I turn between centers whenever I can. It's more stable, and it's not quite so dangerous. Now I'm going to bring the center cone up here to help stabilize it. I'm going to turn some more on it. I'm not going to do too much shaping till I get the last rings on. I got another 
maple ring to put on, and I got the two trim rings to put on it. So I'm going to bring the cone up and turn this a little bit, smooth it to glue up the next ring on. I got this turned a little bit and flattened. I'm ready now to glue on the Peruvian walnut trim ring. And after I get it glued on, of course, I'm going to have to turn it down to the correct thickness. And then all I have to do after that is put on the yellow heart trim ring. And the yellow heart trim ring, of course, is the one I match to the inside and outside diameter of the bottom piece. The Peruvian walnut <coughs> trim ring has been put on, turned down the thickness. Now I'm ready to put on the last ring, which is the yellow heart, which of course I matched it up to the bottom, both inside and outside diameters. So when I glue it on, I want to make it sure it's as centered as close as I can get it. And then when I turn it, when I turn the rest, I'm not going to turn this until I glue it to the bottom so it'll match up. I'm to glue both halves together now. I got them dry fitted. One mounted in the tailstock, one on the headstock. There's two things I got to do. I made this yellow trim ring the same inside diameter and the same outside diameter as the top ring on the bottom, the purple heart ring. Remember I did that with hot melt glue. Now the other thing is to line the pattern on the top up with the pattern on the bottom. What I'm going to do, run a string from the center to the center. Then I'm going to put, let's do this one. I already got it marked here. center to the center okay this is the center of this one and this is the center of this one right here right there now when I glue them together I just have to line those marks up and the pattern should Line up right. The glue's dried now enough. I can go ahead and turn it. I can put the final shaping on it now between centers, so I can turn it pretty good. It's quite stable. It's a lot safer. So I'm going to go ahead and do some final shaping on it now. Okay, I'm ready now. I've got it sanded and finished put on it. I'm ready to do the top. I'm going to have to take off the face plate. When I do, I'm going to put the wheels on it. So I put tape here for the wheels to run on, protect the finish. Probably don't need them, but I'm going to put them on anyway. So right now, i got to part the face plate off. i got my parting tool. It's semi-sharpened. It ain't real sharp. And I'll just put it where the... where the brown paper is and part it off should come right off should not be a problem It's loose now. Just a little bit holding it on. Come on, there it goes, there it goes. Part it right off, right into paper. No problem. 
That's why I use brown paper. So now I'll put the wheels on it, and then I'll finish turning the top. I'm going to have to thin it down some, probably on the inside. I'm ready to start turning now, finish the top. It's too thick here yet, but the angles on the inside and the outside aren't the same. So I'm going to turn the outside down. It's thicker here than it is at the back, so I'm just going to bring the outside down at a sharper angle. I've got the top finished. I got it taped so I can reverse it. I got to reverse it now and turn the bottom. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to put the coal jaws here, turn it around, use the coal jaws. I'll have to put them on the inside because of the taper. I'm going to use the tapered pins. But I can't tighten it too tight or it'll break the top ring. Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that. So I'm going to turn around, put it on the coal jaws, and then I'm going to put the wheels on the back here to hold it. So it should be all right. Okay, I got it on the coal jaws. I got the wheels here on the back. I brought the tail stock up, not real tight, because this piece on the bottom ain't too strong. But this will hold it. It ain't going to go nowhere. I'm going to go ahead and turn the bottom down now. Okay, here it is finished. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. Like I said, mainly it's just about this ring. Not much else. I did show a little bit of the rest of the construction. But I've got so many videos now on everything else, including this feature ring. So like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you come back and see my next one. I appreciate everybody watching and everybody that subscribed. Thank you for watching and come back for the next one.